Hi everybody, welcome to my 16th video on beams. In this video, I'm simply going to find the maximum shear stress in this particular cross section of beam if the shear at that point is 75 kilonewtons. So we know that the shear equation That's our shear equation. So if we're finding the maximum shear equation, we given V, we can maximize it. Q, we can maximize. We can maximize Q. All right, the definition of Q being, in this case, the moment of area, the first moment of area about the neutral axis, which will be somewhere here, I'm guessing, over I, which is constant, and B, which we are gonna have to decide. All right, because we have three different widths here. All right, so let's start with finding that centroidal axis because I is also going to depend on that neutral axis, centroidal axis, same thing in this situation, because we want to find the moment of inertia about the neutral axis. In order to find something about the neutral axis when all of our pieces are not about the neutral axis, is to find where it is and then use the parallel axis theorem to calculate how much moment of inertia extra there is because they're offset from the neutral axes. Anyway, neutral axes. Know that the Q of this piece overall is equal to the sum of the Q of the pieces individually. And we know that Q is equal to Y bar A. All right, so we can say All right, the overall centroid times the whole area is the sum of all the pieces, their areas, and their distance to the centroid. So for our case, we have three separate pieces. I'll call this one, two, and three. We can say Alright, so all that remains is to find these. Like I've done before, I'm going to put this into a table. Okay, so if we just redraw our piece here and get some dimensions on it. Alright, so like we usually do, we're going to take our Y to be measured from the base. So these different things give us the different distances to the centroid of each piece. All right, this being one, two, and three still. All right, so Y1 is just half of that, so it's going to be five. All right, and then Y2 is half of this piece plus this bottom piece, so it's 20 plus 10, 30. And by the same logic, the areas then of each piece is just going to be the area of this whole piece here, there you have this whole piece here, and that. And adding all of these up, because we, what we're really doing is satisfying this equation, this is y bar a1, y bar a2, all right, corresponding to 1 there, 2 there, and 3 there. So we add this whole column up, divide it by this whole column. All right, so talking about columns, if you're doing a lot of these, make something in Excel for yourself. Excel is a powerful tool. Anyway.
All right, this makes sense. 33 millimeters. That's definitely above this bottom piece, and it's about a hair below this piece right here. Actually, a hair above the centroid of this piece. Okay, so now that we have that, we can move on and find a bunch of other things that we need. Let's start with the moment of inertia. So the moment of inertia of a piece, or the total moment of inertia of an individual piece is the moment of inertia of itself about its own centroid plus any distance away from the centroidal axis that it is, that distance squared, and times the area of the piece itself. So we can write So IC is, alright, so the base, alright, so that's basically the, the dimension parallel to the neutral axis times the height, which is the dimension perpendicular to the neutral axis. So for the bottom one here, it's base, that's 30, times height is 10, cubed by 12. And then the same for all the other ones. All right, so the distance away from the centroid. So I didn't draw it in here, but our actual centroid is about right there, of the whole piece. So to find the distance for the first one, all right, that's the distance away from the neutral axis to the centroid of this piece. So it's gonna be the centroid of the whole piece minus the centroid of one. All right, so it's 33.9 minus five. Alright, for the second piece it's going to be 33.9 minus 30. Alright, so it's only... For the third one it's y3 minus the centroid there. So 67.5 minus 33.9. Alright, the next column is just squaring d and times it by a. And of course, the total is just a sum of this column and this column. Again, see how useful Excel could be if you made a program here for yourself. All right, we know the total moment of inertia of the whole piece. So we'll call it total is equal to the sum of the moment of inertia of the individual pieces, all right? This is an individual column here, so we just add all this up, we get All right, now this is millimeters to the four, all right? Later on, we might gonna wanna put all into meters when we put it in this equation. So how do we get from millimeters to the four to meters to the four. So you can memorize something, but I like to think of it like this. All right, we know that's to be true. So if we keep to the power four this side, to the power four this side, we can say, and then this is one, so we times this by that, and the total moment of inertia is Right, and by the same little bit of logic, we can say the centroid is at All right, moving on. So we have the moment of inertia. B, I, we can find B, Q. All right, now this is a, probably one of the trickiest parts of this problem because Q is defined as the first moment of area about the centroidal axis. All right, so we can go above or below the centroidal axis because we know Q is gonna be maxed at the centroidal axis. All right, I'll say that again. The maximum value of the shear stress we know is at the neutral axis. And that is true because the maximum value of Q is at the centroidal axis because overall it's zero, so it's gonna be like big 
and then it goes to zero as you go. So we need to find Q of the piece either above or below the neutral axes. So this can be a little bit tricky to think about. Again, a clear sketch is the best way to solve this. Alright, so here's the centroids of the individual pieces. Alright, the centroid overall is going to be right here. Alright, now what we're interested in is Q of the piece above here. Alright, so we can say Q, like we did before, is the sum of the Q individual. And how many individual Qs are there, like Q or Y? times a above this piece. Alright, well it's just the whole top piece here and a portion of the second piece and that's where the trick comes in. So I'm going to label these Alright, I'm going to give them a start because this y bar is not the same as a was in the first case. So this is our neutral axes. So the y bar of 2, that's still this middle piece, star, is the distance from the centroid of this piece here so the centroid of this piece to the neutral axes. Okay, and then y bar 3 is from the centroid of this piece above here. Down to the neutral axes. Okay, so I find a Q of this whole piece, but it's really hard to do just by looking at it, right? Like, how are you going to do that just all by itself? You can't just calculate Q in one shot because there's clearly two distinct sections. So the overall Q, the overall first moment of area, is the sum of the individual areas. So we just break it down into the two areas that are most suited for us and solve. So what are these things now? All right. So this is where we can write some equations in. So the distance to this neutral axis was 33.9. Alright, so we can write Alright, so the distance from the y to the neutral axis plus 2 times this so that's basically the whole height of this thing here equals 50 because we know that from here to here it's 10 plus 40 50 alright now how about the third one well this total length here is 35 so we can make an equation using that 35 by 2 so that's basically this distance right here from the centroid you know, half of it plus 2 times the centroid, because the centroid of this little piece that's red, this distance times 2 gives you this thing, All right? by definition because it's at the center. So something at the center times 2 gives you the whole thing. All right, and that's just going to simply equal, and going out with solving that, Alright, so I've got that, and A3, I left that just as A3 because it's still area 3. So what's the area of this 2 piece? Alright, I give it a star because it's a slightly different area. Alright, well that's just going to be 2 times y bar star times the width here, which is 20. 
Well, let's just do that all here. So the width again, that was 20, times 2, times y bar 2, so that's 8.05. All right, plus y bar 3. All right, so converting this into meters. All right, and there we have it. That's the final bit of information we need to solve this equation here. So let's just rewrite that out and plug in all the values we know. V, that was 75 kilonewtons. Q. All right now B, all right? So we really have three Bs because B just means the width of the cross section. So we've got one B and then, you know, getting bigger. So what B value will give us the greatest shear stress? Well, that's gonna be the smallest value because it's in the denominator. So we're gonna pick the 10 millimeters, all right? So 10 up there. All right, and it turns out the final maximum shear stress is 134 MPa. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I really tried to focus on finding the centroids and moments of inertia of these funny looking areas. And I really want to uh, point out this method of using this table, it's really handy. And yeah, I actually kind of like doing this sort of long, you know, accounting sort of calculations, kind of relaxing. Anyway, I'll see you on my next shear stress video.